Hello, my name is Eric Tenden. I'm Director of Training at One Eleven Global, and I would like to share about my experience uh, about leadership in the House of Prayer. I've been to five different Houses of Prayer where I spent at least one year um, in general as Director of Training, and uh, that was in Europe and in North America. So one of the first things um, that is necessary is to have a vision. So a uh, vision is not always a dream or this huge thing because we are all different and the Lord uses us in different ways. But having this conviction, having clarity into what we are doing. I saw a lot of leaders who wanted to add a little bit of house of prayer to their church or a little bit of prayer rooms or prophecy rooms. And so all those things are very good, but they're different than having a house of prayer. Some people want to add prayer and that's really good. And they want it to be enjoyable, therefore it's important to be trained and to train and to have a clear clear vision. Um, it's also important to have a clear focus, what are we doing, and to envision teamwork because uh, we are all different and the Lord uses us together in unity in the body. After that, point two is really sharing the vision, being able to bring people into it, being able to delegate, being able to acknowledge and recognize who is doing what, what are the giftings. Some people are called to the house of prayer to finance it and not to lead it. Other people are called to lead it technically. Other people are called to train. Other people are called to intercede. Other people are called to be in the house of prayer and go out to evangelize or feed the poor. So many, many different things that are possible, um, but Everyone should really spend hours every week at the feet of Jesus, in the place of prayer, in the place of soaking, in the place of meditating on the word. And out of this place, out of this nest, out of this resource, out of this river flowing. So it's important to share the vision after having a vision, knowing what we're doing, having clarity. And it's okay if we don't have clarity since the beginning but it's not okay to walk um, without clarity. So we really need to seek the Lord, and the Lord is going to provide in His way. Um, constantly reinforcing the vision, even at IHOP, the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, where they started a prayer meeting 20 years ago, and it's still going on um, 20 years later, nonstop. They reinforce the vision in each briefing, debrief. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? What are our values? Very important to teach on that, to um, interact with the people, make sure they understand, ask questions, questions and um, answers. Then it's important to understand that as we are leaders in the houses of prayer, we're called to a life of sacrifice. Um, I know a lot of people like the idea or the concept of a house of prayer or having more prayer in the local church or in the home group. But not many people really understand the sacrifice that it is. I've seen many, many different um, scenarios of people wanting to add a little bit of prayer and not much sacrifice. And that's okay, the Lord honors. But when we think of the woman with the alabaster vase, she gave what some theologians think was like a year's worth of wages. And so there's really this idea of going for it. I'm not talking about burnout. I'm not talking about Working too much, I'm talking about priorities, I'm talking about focus, I'm talking about a cost, a cost in time and energy and finances and not just giving the Lord our leftovers, which of course no one is doing. <laughs> um, being a leader in the house of prayer is being a servant leader. I love this concept, this reality where we go low in order to make others successful. So we're not trying to have a position, we're not trying to shine and to have people see us first of all, but we're really serving others. Servant leader, how can I make other people successful? What are they doing? What is their forte? What, is, uh, what are the skills that the Lord has given them and how can I make them successful? How can I help them? How can I find training for them? How can I 
um, answer their questions? How can I provide an infrastructure or an organization? So being a servant leader is also being trained. A lot of people think they can be leaders in the house of prayer, and I think the Lord uses them, but long term it's important to be trained. It's important to understand that there's maybe an organization that's growing, and so we need management skills. We can't just do it because there was a calling at the beginning, but the Lord really wants to empower us to have clear vision and the tools that are necessary. That's why we have teamwork. That's why e each person in the house of prayer is doing something different, but we're doing it together. Some people provide finances. Some people manage the house of prayer. Some people sing. Some people do music. Some people intercede. Some, But all of us, we want to be in this place of uh, prayer meditating on the Word of God, interceding and soaking. It's important as a leader to have an amazing team, a team that we're constantly encouraging, blessing, complimenting, seeing their, their strengths, seeing where we can help them. But actually building the team is very important and discerning the gifts and callings. And sometimes as a leader, we're not fully equipped for that. And so it's really important to uh, surround ourselves with a team of people, of consultants, in humility, in servanthood. And that really provides a safe place and is helpful for the growth. We see lots of houses of prayer that are not growing. And I'm not saying numbers, you know, getting to 100 or whatever. I'm talking about growing um, deep in roots, being rooted and grounded in love, serving the community, connecting with local churches, inspiring people, because I don't know, 99% of our Christians are not in a house of prayer. So we really want to inspire others. We really want to be a place of excellence. And that's our next point, point six. We want to be a place of excellence and a resource. We want other churches, local groups to know that we're not in competition with them, but we really want to provide a place where people are inspired about prayer, intercession, the presence of God. And then they're on fire and we send them out to their local churches, their local expression, their local Christian schools, their home groups. We really want to be this place that is focusing and seeking for excellence in everything we do. Excellence is not perfection. Ex excellence is an attitude of heart that wants to... Um, use the gifts that God has given us and train them and grow into them. And excellence is really honoring the Lord. Perfectionism is a competition where we're never happy and we're always comparing. Excellence is being very happy in the Lord and wanting more. It's what James says about the, the overflowing of our heart and doing, not just saying, but doing, having faith, but also walking in our faith. Then the apostolic mandate, I think, um, in general, houses of prayer, uh, prayer initiatives have this apostolic mandate to build others, to network, to grow, to connect in unity with other local churches or other expressions, to serve them, to go in their prayer meetings, to invite pastors to your meetings that they can share about their vision and prayer topics and to love on them, to pray for them and to network. I think there's really um, this expression of the apostolic mandate that gives an opportunity for the house of prayer to not be self-centered, because that is something that can quickly happen, but really to be centered on the needs of the body, praying for them, but also training them, inviting them, networking. So really shining with excellence as a team in the clarity of a vision. And last but not least, and there could be probably many other points, um, being a resource, as I said, not a competition. Letting, letting the people know, being very clear in communication, we're not a competition to, to you. We want people to be excited about prayer, to be excited about encountering the Lord, excited about prophesying, about playing prophetically the, the piano, about flowing as a team. We want to inspire people and bless them. So yeah, those are a few points about leadership in the house of prayer. If you have questions, don't hesitate. I'd love to answer and to have a dialogue. But I think for today, that's all. Thank you so much for tracking. God bless you.